Well, welcome to Pure Up Ministries and the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I want to share with you a word about pressing in to the deeper waters with the Lord in the secret place with insight from John G. Lake. And I want to explain something to you that many believers, they receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And they understand that when they die, they're going to heaven. And that's where they stop. And God desires that on this earth that we might know Him. Because He didn't just take you to heaven and mean you got saved. But He desires that we would know Him on this earth. That we would not be conformed to this world, but we would be transformed. And as He is, so too are we in this world. There is a higher life that He desires for us. The life in that abundant. And as we seek to understand the fullness of the finished work of the cross, it doesn't just mean eternal salvation, but here on the earth that we would have a relationship with Him and walk in the dominion, that we lay hold of our inheritance even on this earth, that we understand that we've been made righteous, for example, and that His mercy is so great towards us that He wants to reveal Himself in and through us and make a salt, light, and a voice of righteousness. That you have a divine purpose and God wants to do something bigger and greater that's beyond you so that the world may see the victory of the cross through you. So Father, we just come in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Come and tangibly speak to us. Open the Word and reveal Jesus. Let us have a revelation knowledge, a word that impacts us and bears the fruit of heaven. Father, we love on you. Open our eyes to see you more. We want to know you and walk in a greater reality of you every day in our lives so that every doubt, discouragement must leave and that we would walk as effective believers in this hour, giving you all the glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I want to start by reading a couple scriptures so we're building upon a word foundation. And Hosea 6, 3, so let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn, and He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. And God wants you to come to the place of knowing Him, where the reality of Him grows in you deeper. And there's a relationship, not just a knowing about Him, but a growing daily knowing of Him. And as I said, He breathes on you, and there's the rain that brings a greenness every day, a restoration and a freshness of hope to you. That's God's desire, so that this thing is living, alive, and always fresh, always now. In Hebrews 10, 19 through 22, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having a heart sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our body washed with the pure word. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who is promised is faithful. Holy Spirit, just give us revelation of that. And let us live that. John G. Lake said this, The mind is the soul life, and it continues to be of the earth, earthly, and doing earthly things until God does something to that mind. And we seek for God for a new mind. And there's got to be a change. I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures here, or a scripture here to start with. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every emotion, every opinion, every hurt, every disappointment, every discouragement, I'm bringing captive so that it's no longer Lord in my life. But He is. All these things that will create a veil and keep me out of the secret place, I'm bringing captive. Because I want to go into the deep waters of stepping into my inheritance, where I'm no longer dissatisfied with, thank God I'm going to heaven. I want to know you on the earth. And, and lay hold of the salvation. I want to press on. I want to be found in Him, as Paul will talk about. 
pressing on towards the high cost so that my life is a living worship unto him, bringing him glory in all I say, do, and think. John said the church at large recognizes the salvation of the Spirit, but they do not recognize the salvation of the mind from the power of sin. And that is why the many church people say there's no such thing as sanctification. And we need a life that's wholly sanctified, set apart by the Holy Spirit in us, changing us. And as we take the soul arena and we give it to the Lord, there is a change where we're no longer held by the Lordship of our soul arena, but by the Lordship of Jesus, where your thoughts, your memories, your hurts do longer control and dictate and hold you captive, but rather you stepped into the dominion that Jesus provided for you and is your inheritance as you press into the deep water and lay hold of the things that God has for you on the earth. And now I bring captive by stepping up and taking hold of the dominion I have, all those things that held me captive. And I bring them to the cross. And I bring them under the authority of the name of Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to the world. Now, this is speaking to the church, not on believers. Born again, spirit, this is born again believers, spiritual believers. And do not be conformed to the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good acceptable and perfect this is something we're required to do what well, wasn't it all finished on the cross we've got to walk this thing out we've got to lay hold of this we've got to step in and be transformed so that the full finished work of the cross is evident in every area of our lives that my soul arena bows to the finished work of the cross. I want to receive everything that Jesus bought for me. I want to be everything that he says that I am. John says, Christ, I surrender my mind, thoughts, opinions, will, and emotions totally to you. My soul is your territory and not mine. Amen. My soul is no longer the Lord. That whole territory I give to you, I surrender to you, and we've got to make a choice that not tomorrow, not someday in the future, but today I choose no longer to be held captive to the soul arena, but God, I surrender to you. It's no, you know, I, I talk to people and say, how are you doing? Well, I'm still struggling. Why are you still struggling? Because you're held captive by the soul arena, and you've never made the decision, God, I bring it captive to you. But it's not easy. No, we've got to do it by the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit, I surrender. And sometimes you may have to do it every minute. I surrender to you, Holy Spirit, take it. Now open the Word. I'm renewed by the Spirit of the Word. Holy Spirit, breathe on this Word and let it have a life in it. Let it have an impact in me and bear fruit through me. Get in. Let's continue. I don't want to stop here because there's so much I want to get to you today. If you and I... If you and I had as much faith to believe that we had mastery over the enemy as we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior, we would have mighty little trouble with the devil or his power while we walk through this old world. Jesus said, Behold, I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that, of course, is Luke 10, 19. Bring us back to the dominion that God gave Adam and Eve that he calls us now in Christ to walk in, to trample over that old serpent, to take authority over everything of the enemy because he made an open triumph over him and he's brought us into that. In him, we have that victory. John says, I tell you, beloved, it is not necessary for people to be dominated by evil, nor by evil spirits. Instead of being dominated, Christians should exercise dominion and control. Even Satan has no power over them, only as they permit him to have. And the devil tries to lie and deceive how big and how great he is, but you've got a small devil, big Jesus. And we've got to get into the deep waters of getting a revelation by getting longer in the Word and allowing the Holy Spirit to make this bigger in us, making Jesus more real in us. Until we come to the place that we see how he is the almighty God, he's the great God, he's the Lord of the hosts of the army of heaven, and how he made an open triumph over our enemy, and we walk in this thing, we receive it, and we live it. It's ours. 
Jesus said, Take heed, therefore, how you hear. Luke 8, 18. Not what you hear. One cannot help what he hears, but he can take heed how he hears. And because we know that Jesus said, having ears to hear, they did not hear. They were not in tune. Now, maybe some of you remember the old days of the old radio, and you had to tune it. And if it was in your car, you know, you'd be driving, you had to keep tuning the thing. And you would get this song, you were enjoying it, and it's beautiful, all of a sudden you get crackly and you had to retune it. And we need to be in tune with heaven by pressing in to the secret place, going deeper. Because if you become stationary, you're going backwards. There's got to be a pressing on. Paul says, I press on. And we discovered, of course, in Hosea, I press on. We press on to know him, to be in tune with him, to hear his voice. Start the day as you mean to continue. God, give me eyes to see, ears to hear, and make him bigger. And Lord, I want to receive of your word. Let the word be bigger in you. Let it grow in you. Let it just have a life in you. So that you hear. But now, listen this. When it is something offensive to the spirit and to the knowledge of God, shut the doors against it and it will not touch you. There's certain doors you're going to have to shut. Certain things that as you become uh, more aware of the Lord, that steal the life, that interfere, that create noise, that start to drown out the voice of heaven, stop it. Certain actions are certain doors, certain things. I mean, the enemy will do certain things in your life, you know. I travel with some people, and, and the Lord had to get this out of me because I used to drive a lot. And, you know, you get to the, the, the light. And I love being in cars with some people today, and I, I said, you know, I've been, and I've just, I've been there. I don't say it to them, but I'm like, thank God you've done a work in me. And it's a red light. And then it turns green. And there's a car in front. And they're like, it's green. Can't get any greener. Can't get, and they're getting all frustrated. And I'm like, glory to God, I was there. And now I'm enjoying the ride. Because I'm in a different place. And we've got to come to a different place where in the test, what comes out of us doesn't steal the life. But rather it magnifies. Because I don't want something to take the peace that would allow me to lose that tuning with the Spirit. So I don't hear the noise of the enemy. I want to hear the Spirit at all times. I want if something else, a TV show. If all of a sudden it disturbs I turn it off. There are certain, you know, certain things that maybe I like and it turn, suddenly disturbs me. I'm like, I turn it off. I don't need that. I don't want that because I want my life to be in tune with the Holy Ghost. This is more important than anything else because of the life. I'm guarding my heart. I'm guarding the life. The Christian lives as God wills in the world, dominating sin, evil, and sickness. I would to God that he would be lifted up until all believers would realize their privilege in Christ Jesus. And I want in my life to lift Jesus up that all men would be drawn unto him. And that's God's purpose in you, is to bring you to the deep waters where Jesus is lifted up in you and people recognize Jesus in you and see him. And they're drawn not to you, but to Jesus. We've got to get a hold of something in this upside down kingdom. At his last supper, with the disciples knowing that all power had been given unto him, They'd seen Jesus walk with all power. Jesus took a towel and a basin and proceeded to wash the disciples' feet. Here the Master, the Lord who had all this authority at His Last Supper, knowing what was going to happen, washes their feet, including Judas. Knowing full well that that man was about to betray him that very night and knowing full well what he was going to go through, the pain, the torment, and everything else, he still washed willingly, lovingly that man's feet. Those ugly, icky feet. I mean, I don't like feet. But he washed it in an absolute act of humility because the people were so precious to him and he was in tune with the purpose of the Father. Not my will be done, but yours. And the deep water calls for us to say, God, not my will, but yours. Not my agenda, not my purpose, but I seek that in all things, in all ways, that you are glorified, even 
if it's humbling or I, my flesh man considers it humiliating. But you've got to be lifted up so that all men see you, Jesus. John said, when he had finished, he said, know ye what I've done, John 13, 12. In explanation, he said, if then I, your Lord, your master, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet, John 13, 14. Jesus demonstrating the very character and heart that the Spirit of the living God now infuses into you and wants to bring forth from you this new person that you're not faking or making, but the Spirit of God is bringing forth from you as the Word is allowed to do a work in you. I assure you, I guarantee you, that as you allow the Holy Ghost to open this Word and give life to it, and you allow Him to open your eyes and to see and ears to hear, this Word engrafted, received, will begin to produce through you, in you, life. It will begin to change you. You begin to act, walk, talk differently. And if you will shut down those things that would steal the life so that you guard this word and allow it to grow to maturity, Jesus will be lifted up and in you. John says, when we examine the heart, human heart and endeavor to discover what is that that retards our progress, I believe that we will find pride in the human soul is perhaps the greatest difficulty we have to overcome. Jesus taught us a wonderful humility, taking the place of a servant. We have got to come to that place in this upside down kingdom where we surrender and lay our lives down that he's glorified. The higher we seek to go, the lower we go. And instead of trying to be seen, recognized, you've got to see my gift, you've got to see my call. I want to be lifting him up. I want to be the servant. I want to be the one humbling myself because I'm not trying to bring the attention onto me. If any man's going to lift me up, it will be Jesus, not me. Hallelujah. He said this, his presence with the, was with us. His in us must produce in us our, the, our hearts the same conditions that were in His. It must bring our life the same humility that was in His. It is one of the secrets of the entrance into the grace of God. And I want to assure you that it's one of the most powerful secrets of the secret place, is that you are brought to this place of humility because the Spirit of God brings forth every fruit or element of the fruit in your life and begins to manifest the same character because it's got the same DNA, it's got the same authority and produces the same results that it produced in Jesus that it will produce in your life because it's the same life. The life and that abundant that Jesus promised to give us was fully demonstrated test-driven, wherever you may consider it, through Jesus. If you want to say, well, what's it like? You look at Jesus. I need a test drive. You look at Jesus. That's the same life that will manifest in and through you because it's the same Holy Spirit and it works the same way. And you've got to surrender and humble yourself and allow the Spirit. And there's times where I feel foolish. I'd rather be a fool for Christ's sake and allow the Holy Spirit to bring me to a place of humility that Jesus will be lifted up and there will be fruit for the Father. Romans 8, 37. But in all things we are overwhelmingly conquering through Him who loved us. See, we want the victory, we want them more than conquerors, but we've got to understand it is those that are led by the Spirit that are the sons, those that we yield to and surrender to the Spirit that are brought into the place where we are more than conquerors. But sometimes it may take us down a path of humility that I don't want to go down, a price that I don't want to pay. But failure to pay brings us to a place where we end up in our own destruction. Pride goes before destruction, and of course a haughty spirit before a fall. And God wants to save us from so much and bring us into life in that abundant if we're willing to just trust Him and go down the path of life. 
John said this, one of the truest things in all my life in my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ has been to feel that he was capable of knowing my sorrows and yours. And in the truest sense, he therefore became our comrades. He is closer to you than a brother. He's not coming to bring you sympathy, but comfort, strength to lift you up and out of it so that in the midst of it, I may be going down through something. He wants to lift me out of it to bring something in you that brings him glory. And he wants to strengthen and encourage you. But there's certain things he may have to break off of you. There's certain things he may have to take and show you've got to let go of. He's got to get the splinters out of our hands. And we've got to trust him to, to say, okay, but what if it hurts? It might hurt, but it will continue to hurt and get worse unless we allow him to do the operation that he needs to do to bring about the new person. John said there is a union between the Christ and the Christian that is so deep, so pure, so sweet, so real. And God wants this relationship to grow in you that there's never a doubt, there's never a questioning, because every day the reality of Him grows and the consciousness of Him increases. You don't have to work at it, but you're aware of Him always, everywhere. And when you pray, He's there. When you get more, He's there. And I know Him. And I'm aware of Him. And that fear of Him consumes me, that holy awe, that I don't want to offend Him because there's a holy, awesome love and it's tangibly growing and it's building in me a confidence. It's building in me a strength of faith. It's building in me this new person with a boldness. John said this, it's because of the continuous inflow of the Spirit of Christ in our hearts that we appreciate or realize His power and triumph. His Spirit lifts us above uh, our surroundings and causes us to triumph anywhere and everywhere. And so in the secret place, there's an infusion of this life and it's begin to produce in you that triumph, that life. It's begin to set you free because he whom the Son sets free and where the Spirit of the Lord is liberty. And you're discovering through the Word, all of a sudden there's a new life that you're walking in. And it has a hope, it has a freshness, it has a goodness. And Christianity has become real to you. Jesus, you no longer have any questions. Why? Because I don't just know about him. I know him. And like Peter, you can say, you are the Christ. You are. We got our first revelation. We said, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. Now, you're my everything. You're my all in all. You are the love of my life. And then you get to that place where I am my beloved's and he is mine. And we go through the stages and it grows and it develops to such a maturity and strength. I want to finish with this. The Christian life is designed by God to be a life of splendid, holy triumph. That triumph is produced in us through the continuous inflow and abiding presence of the spirit of the triumphant Christ. And the victory won. See, God wants to bring you out to bring you into something and to display through you the victory of the cross so that we get past focusing on thank God for my salvation and that's it. I want to get a hold of the finished work of the cross in every area of my life and live it out. I want to receive everything that is mine on the earth so that he is lifted up in my life. I want to walk in the freedom he had for me. I don't want to live the old life. I don't want it. I didn't like it then, and I don't like it now. I love the new life, and I want to live it, and I want to enjoy it, and I want to bring others to the new life. I want to show people how to lay hold of breakthroughs and get through and get out of the wilderness. Because I've walked through it by the Holy Spirit, and I've discovered how real it is, and I've discovered there's a truth to the Word, and there's an authority to the Word. I want people to get a hold of that. Hallelujah. And God wants you to have it and receive it and know it and come to places as as he is. So too are you in this world and you are being transformed where you were yesterday. Maybe good, but you're further today and tomorrow you're going to be even further along. There's a fire growing in you. And if you're still in the same place, I encourage you to repent. I encourage you to get the soul arena and bring it 
and submit it to the Lordship of Jesus. I encourage you today to make a decision to say no to that thing and shut it down. Stop allowing it a voice of authority in your life. Come to the finished work of the cross and there take authority and realize that you've been given dominion in Him and that your righteousness because of Jesus and step into the life abundant because that is not a pride thing. It's a humility of surrendering to the authority of Jesus so that we can step in and be people and vessels that reveal His glory. Oh, I pray you're getting this. I pray you're receiving this in the name of Jesus. I want you to know that we're praying for you and I encourage you to pray for us. Please like, subscribe, and share because as you do, you help us reach more backsliders by having the algorithms that YouTube and Google get this video out to more people. We're seeing so many people daily being restored and I want to see more people brought back into a deeper, intimate relationship with the Lord. And if you have, let us know. We are glad to hear from you. And I encourage you to consider joining our prayer partnership team. It doesn't cost you anything. If the Lord puts in your heart to share with us financially, great. You'll help us do greater things, but you don't have to. And in fact, anybody asking for money, with their comments, emails, whatever, is a scam artist, and I ask you to pray for them and ignore them. But I do ask you to consider joining that prayer partnership team. You can join it by going to our partnership page. Information is in the details below. And signing up, and you'll be invited to our Zoom meetings. And there you'll people praying for you, and you can be part of praying for us and standing with us and reaping the rewards of the impact that we're having, the souls restored. Amen and joining our Zoom meetings and we minister to mightily. Well, I want you blessed. I want you encouraged. Check out more videos in the series and other videos, and may they build you up and strengthen and encourage you and help you live boldly for Jesus and walk in the life and that abundance that Jesus has for you in this hour. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Be encouraged. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.